I've not actually done an interview like this before, like being out and spoken about it, but it's not that we hide it. So I'm hoping maybe this interview will help anybody, and if it does, that's why I'm doing it. So that's why I think the kind of different campaigns that go on are important as well, to hopefully help people that are struggling. Lee, thanks for joining us. Uh, welcome to our Rainbow Laces discussions. You're joining us as one of our amazing allies. AJ, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're celebrating the Rainbow Laces campaign this year and a big part of the campaign is to raise awareness uh, and for our clubs to show solidarity with the LGBTQ plus communities. Um, you know, within Palace and within your friends, within other women's clubs, you're always around members of the LGBT plus community. Um, you know, from what's, what you see, do you think people perform better when they can be themselves? Yeah, I think it's a no-brainer. If people feel comfortable within their own skin and who they really are, then naturally they can just worry about the task in hand and instead of worrying about putting a mask on or covering up who they really are or looking off their shoulders. So it's only got its positives. Uh, I mean, AJ, you're one of our most experienced players. You've been with Palace now for three years and before this with London Bees and then a stint in the England under-19s camp. Um, perhaps you'd mind sharing a little bit about your story, how it's been for you in your club settings. I mean, have these always been spaces that you felt particularly safe or have you faced any challenges at all because of your sexuality? Yeah, to be honest, within the women's game, I've always felt completely comfortable, which I'm aware not everyone is privileged to have that feeling of like homeliness or kind of like understanding and everyone has their own different stories and we all know that we're in like our own different types of journey or the stage of their journey that they're at as well. So for me, I feel like quite privileged and lucky to have that type of story and the welcoming all the clubs that I've ever been at. I mean, you've been an amazing ally to myself uh, and you're an amazing ally to, to the girls in the squad as well. Um, what would you say would make a, a good ally? The first thing is it's, it's just normal. Like, it's, it, to me, you're not a lesbian, you're, you're just a human being. And how does it feel for you being an openly out player at Palace? What's the kind of atmosphere like in, in the squad just generally? Um, I would say no different, yeah. no different than somebody that maybe isn't openly out or is straight and that's completely what I would wish for, for to be no different, I don't want to be treated any different, I don't want to be put on a pedestal all the time, I don't want to be like banging the door and shouting it all the time, so being treated the same is exactly what I would want, is exactly what I get as well. Se second thing as well is checking in, making sure everything's okay, like you would with someone who's straight, like, how's your relationship? Ask them questions, how's your dating life? Um, and completely normalise those conversations as well. Now, a lot of players in the WSL and Championship are openly out on social media. Um, mm. I know that you're sort of quite happy to share photos of uh, yourself and, and your partner and all the lovely things that you get up to. Um, I just wondered if that was um, something that had come quite organically to you in terms of you know, making that decision to put things up publicly or whether that was a, a sort of active decision that, that you made. Um, I think it took a good few years, so it's not like when you initially get with somebody and then you start posting it non-stop, so I guess it was, yeah, I don't think we ever had a conversation about posting either, so it was kind of like, once everyone's families are comfortable and everyone's happy in the situation, like, yeah, just post a picture every now and then of each other. And as part of this, obviously as part of the Rainbow Laces campaign, you'll be wearing the Rainbow Laces for a couple of our big upcoming games. Um, how important is it to you to have things like this where we really reflect and focus on the LGBT plus community, um, you know, making sure that there's awareness around it and that, you know, fans as well as players, colleagues, teammates, physios, all the staff behind the scenes feel comfortable as well. Yeah, I think raising awareness is important for every aspect of life and it is really important that we have that dedicated time and wearing those laces to show each other that we're, stand, we're standing with, with you and I think all it does is make people think and um, people might then open a conversation that they wouldn't normally have because there's 365 days of a year, people are busy in their own lives and they get wrapped up in it and sometimes when then you know that it's a dedicated day or month to these kind of things that people are open to more conversations. Kids may say, see something and ask mum, dad why they wear different coloured laces and then it starts and sparks a conversation. So I think that's what it's all about. And then the rest of the year, I do firmly believe it's all about celebrating it every day of the year, but it's also normal as well. So instead of making it a big celebration, it's normal. So. It's important that we get that balance right and I think that's what this allows us to do is celebrate it and make a big fuss over it and then 
all the other months and, and days, it's about, it's just normal, it's so normal to me. I don't know any other way, but I appreciate that not everyone has that mentality because they're, it's not part of their day-to-day -day life. How important is it to you to have campaigns like this which support the LGBTQ plus community and sort of shed some light and awareness on, on things? Yeah, it's just always great to, like you said, shine awareness on it. Um, it's just so important. I've not actually done an interview like this before, uh, like being out and spoken about it, but it's not that we hide it. Um, and I guess my main driving force was behind it was like, maybe there are little boys and girls that are struggling and they do just need a bit of inspiration. So I'm hoping maybe this interview will help anybody. And if it does, that's why I'm doing it. So that's why I think the kind of different campaigns that go on are important as well to hopefully help people that are struggling.